Martin Esclave, The Finch in My Brain, forward by Russell Brand, good choice. 18, chapter 18. My Endless Affair with Difficult People, Rome, London, Munich, 2014. Email to Russell Brand in LA. Hey Russ, I've got a little story that I think you'll like. A few weeks ago, tired of my body being continuously injected with so many drugs and making peace with the fact that I most probably have to take Temadol, my main drug, for the rest of my life, I decided that I should at least get off cortisone, which I've always hated as it makes my whole body puff up. So I did that, and even though I'm still fat, I have the feeling that I'll soon become a slightly prettier fat dude. Yesterday it was really hot, and to kick away my constant sleepiness, I set myself the task of fixing the taps in both bathrooms as the water was simply not coming out properly. I assumed that it couldn't be too difficult, so I tried my best. Though I couldn't scratch or pull out the dirt in either of the bathrooms with my fingers, I saw there was a screwy bit right by the tap which looked like it was made to be unscrewed. It felt like, you know, those jars of jam that had been closed for too long. And I thought that by pulling really hard, maybe with the bottom of my t-shirt in my hand, I could open it. I even tried putting some boiling water on it and then pulling, but nothing budged. Margarita was up on the terrace with her magazines and I really wanted to show her I'm not an idiot. But I felt one of my headaches coming, so I took a nap, assuming that the taps would probably loosen up by themselves after sitting in the hot water for a while. I woke up and tried again, but they still did not budge. So I went to the kitchen, picked up some big, strong scissors that have a, that have a bit in the bottom part by the handles that I could use to push together and unscrew them. Bang, bang, bang. Like that classic story of the little kid who magically pulls out the sword from the whatever it was stuck in. I unscrewed both of them, no problem. I put them into a cup, immersed them in vinegar and finally detached the bits from the taps which were in fact filled with debris. The water was flowing out happily and so was my mood. I took my cup with my precious bits up the stairs to show Marguerite and my achievement and it kind of worked. I kept our conversation focused on the essentials as there were quite a few other things that still need to be fixed both on the terrace and below but the wall between us was breaking down. We continued talking as we moved towards the stairs. I needed to finish off that job. Without wanting to interrupt her train of thought, I took my eyes off her for a second and started to walk down the stairway. I'd been distracted by something, as though my eyes had caught the movement of a bird as it whizzed by. Did I see something strange just because of the gap in my right eye? I walked down the stairs and then turned left along the hallway where I'd seen the image from the terrace. It all looked normal as I stepped into the bedroom. Maybe I was letting my sick eyes fool me, but as I took one more step towards our closet, I froze. There was a man lying on the floor on the other side of our bed. Very slowly, he pulled himself up and raised his hands over his head. The focus of his eyes made me realise that I was still carrying those large iron scissors in my right hand. What is the probability, what is the probability that walking from my own house I would have violent looking metal scissors in my hand? Mate, it was really amazing how at this stage my character changed radically and from that moment on I was controlled completely by pure instinct. All the emotions of the past few months brought out my core male self. It is rare for any of us to encounter someone who is truly wrong, whose only aim is to steal your stuff. The tone of my voice rose and so did my hand and the scissors. All kinds of words started pouring out of my mouth that I never knew were in my vocabulary. While I hate my own body, which is all fat and puffed out due to the various pharmaceuticals, I realised that in this extreme encounter it had become very different and useful representation. I became conscious that the thief who had been hiding under my marital bed was now standing next to a very large, black bearded man with an extremely loud voice and very sharp looking scissors in his hands. I was not and did not look like a sick person. Perhaps for the first time in my life I was threatening. My words, my movements and my eyes were clearly those of a person who was close to death and now motivated to make this man suffer the same fear. It must have been only a minute later that my confrontation with this thief crossed paths with my wife's character. It was a unique marital moment. Margarita's Macedonian emotions which I'd encountered in the past now exploded into an extreme hatred. 
Thanks to her emotional screaming a few seconds after her arrival in my standoff, our whole neighbourhood was aware of what was happening. I assumed that between us two and the sound now coming from outside the windows, he must have been quite overwhelmed. He was obviously a true professional, as with his hands raised like a lost man in front of a gun crew, he slowly walked his way backwards towards the door. The days, weeks, months, the pressure and the fear of her imminent death and the destruction of my family life all came together and focused on that set of scissors. Without pondering, I pushed them through the belly of our unwelcome guest, of this torturer of our private space, if any of it remained. His legs fell to the ground, his right eye received the blow of the scissors heading through the first section of his brain area. The brain does not have much sensation, I know, so I freely travelled through his skull with these metal kitchen implements. The repercussions of this act could be many, but the feeling of that moment, the release and anxiety of my own death, finally came out. I was higher, stronger and more in control than the creature below my legs. The cancer, the medicines, the orders of the doctors, alive or not, I was in control and I'd finally found a character who had made, without any doubt, the wrong decision and unexpectedly for him met the wrong cancer patient. Our front door was still open from his entry, and while walking slowly backwards he stepped out, protecting his head from the flight of our baby's bicycle, which my wife was using as a sword. He ran down the stairs and then walked very calmly out of the house door, in front of the various people who had come out to see what was happening after hearing my wife's yells. After I checked that Marguerite was fine, I went down the stairs and saw that the people in the street didn't realise the man who had just walked out so casually was part of this whole drama. One would assume that a thief would run after such a confrontation, but as I came out I saw him strolling down the street, still holding those metal scissors. I started screaming at him, and in my socks I began to run after him. At that stage the street observers worked out who he was, and they too started yelling. Within a second he ran into a little side street, and I'd never find him again. I guess this was a strange way of temporarily fixing my marital conflicts. Ciao. Be good. P.S. Oh yes, I finally got the first doses of my dendr dendritic vaccine, but why do they really have to inject it right next to my penis? My Tio Scarvey, the finch in my brain. That was just a brief excerpt, hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, purchase this book. Thank you.